Hey guys, what's up? Today I want to show you how you can compute this limit over there in a pretty cool way, okay? We're not going to use L'Hopital's rule uh, because, I mean, that would be boring. You know how you can take the derivative of that and just plug in pi over 2. But um, we're not going to do that, although we're going to use uh, the derivative of cosine x uh, in a step of the solution. I don't want to use L'Hopital's rule explicitly just yet, okay? I mean, well, not just yet, never, okay? I don't want to use it at all. So yeah, let's begin. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to define a new variable that is going to be delta x. So I'm going to say that let delta x be equal to, and now I'm going to use this denominator over here, x minus pi over 2 as the value for delta x, okay? Now remember that when we have this, uh, if you evaluate um, if you evaluate cosine at pi over 2, you have 0 in the numerator. So when you have this function, well, you have 0 over 0, okay? And, well, if you have basically a limit that is going to 0 over 0. But there is also another limit in calculus that goes to 0 over 0. And that is the limit as delta x approaches 0 for f of x plus delta x minus f of x over delta x. And you might be wondering, well, isn't that the, 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 the definition of a derivative? And yes, that's the, the, the definition of a derivative. This is the difference quotient as the change in the two values approaches zero, okay? And the thing is that this limit also is equal to zero over zero, okay? And well, the good thing is that right now I want to get rid of x minus pi over two and use delta x notation because we're going to, we're going to write this, this limit in terms of this difference quotient. Or we, I, I will try to get to to transform that limit into something that looks like this difference quotient, but with a minor difference. And I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you what that is. So if we create this new variable, well, now we can write our limit as a uh, day limit as x approaches pi over two for cosine x. And now cosine x. Well, now we can change the value of x because we have x over here, and we have we can put this equation in terms of x, or well, we can find a function for x, and we know that it's going to be delta x uh, plus pi over 2, okay? You can just simply rearrange that equation and you get a value for x. So you have cosine of pi over 2 plus delta x, okay? This is how much you have. And this is going to be divided by x minus pi over 2. You know that that equals delta x. So you get this. Now, what, what are we still missing uh, to get to make this limit look as much as possible as the difference quotient? Well, we're missing an initial value. And that initial value, you can see that we have a base point. In the difference quotient, we have a base point that is x. And in this case, well, x is going to be pi over 2, okay? That is going to be the point in which we are going to be evaluating the difference quotient. So we know that we want to the other term that we're missing is going to be the function that we have evaluated at that base point. So in our case, that is going to be cosine of pi over 2. And you're going to subtract. And now we're pretty lucky because cosine of pi over 2 equals 0. So you're not changing anything from the original function, okay? If you're subtracting 0, well, that's the same thing as not doing anything. So you didn't change anything at all. You didn't screw up the entire limit or the function, you just subtracted zero when you added this new term. Now, there is something that we're still missing regarding notation, basically. And I believe, I hope that you have already seen what we need to do. Well, what happens as, uh, if we want to change, instead of using x notation, we want to use delta x notation? Well, we know that delta x is going to be a function in terms of x. So what happens as x approaches uh, pi over 2? for delta x, because uh, and we're, we're taking into consideration delta x because it is the function that we want to substitute into the limit. We want to change this notation over here. So what happens as x approaches pi over 2 for, for delta x? Well, over here we have our definition for delta x. As x approaches pi over 2, you can see that delta x is going to be very close to 0, okay? Because the we're subtracting from x pi over 2. So you're basically going to have pi over 2 minus pi over 2. So you can now rewrite that limit as, so over here, you can write this thing as the limit as delta x approaches pi over 2 for, uh, now you have cosine of 
pi over 2 plus delta x minus cosine of pi over 2. Remember, this is in radians, of course. I'm not sure um, if I mentioned that, but yes, this is in radians. And now, well, delta x is uh, uh, not approaching, I'm sorry, not approaching uh, pi over 2, but 0, okay? This should be 0. And remember, it's going to be 0 because as x approaches pi over 2 for delta x, which is this function, well, you can see that delta x is going to approach 0, okay? So now, this limit implies this limit. And that's why you can write uh, this part over here. And you know that this entire thing is going to be divided by delta x, okay? And if this is divided by delta x, I think now you can see the resemblance with the difference quotient. So now, this entire thing is going to be equal to the derivative with respect to x for cosine x evaluated at x equals pi over 2, okay? And how much is that? Well, I think you know that this is going to be minus sine of pi over 2. Sine of pi over 2 equals 1, okay? That is uh, one of the maximums of the sine function. So you get 1 and times uh, negative, negative 1, well, that's just going to be negative 1, okay? And well, we know the only thing that we did, uh, we know that this limit right here, regardless of the, all the changes and the ways in which we poked this limit, we know that this limit is going to be equal to negative 1, okay? Because the only thing that we did uh, to get to this derivative is basically just change the notation. And if you change the notation, well, you didn't really do anything. You just re you're just writing the same idea in terms of different symbols, and that's it, okay? So we know that this limit is going to be equal to negative 1, okay? And that's basically the entire problem. Uh, this is pretty cool, and basically the only thing that you need to understand is that over here you have 0 over 0, and, well, something in calculus that, thank God, equals 0 over 0 is the derivative. And that is something that is very powerful to solve pretty much almost any limit that has this form, okay? Basically, any limit that has 0, that ends in 0 over 0, you can somehow get to the derivative of, you can write the derivative of that limit or the function that you have in that limit, and then you can compute it. That is, to some extent, why L'Hopital's Lapital, rule works, Okay? Because, well, you can somehow turn 0 over 0 into a derivative. Because the, 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 the definition of a derivative, well, is also equal, it also equals 0 over 0, okay? That is how things work in this case. And so, yeah, that has been everything. I hope that you enjoyed this video, you learned something. And see you in the following one. Don't forget to subscribe, and that's it. See ya.